I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work and are backed by science. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. We use only top-of-the-line formulations dosed for maximum results and the best flavoring systems available. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. tuned to find out what I'm gonna say next. But right now, let's move into the next sketch I wanna go into, sharing with you what we were trying to do as Dynamic Muscle Company NYC. We're doing a training skit, and what we did with this skit was really just the opportunity to kinda of show a little bit of our personalities. And, yeah, while training a little bit, I guess. Anyway, you'll see what I mean. Watch the skit. All right, guys, uh, welcome back to Iron Rage. That is actually a little excerpt from the new Kai Green variety show on his Kai Green YouTube channel. Lee Priest, uh... <laughs> too much mental hamster. What do you think about that? I love the fact that, that Kai is doing a variety show. What do you think? <laughs> He's brain damaged a little bit, I think. <laughs> Just... Just when I started to think Black Lives Matter, he just changed my thought. <laughs> what did I just see? <laughs> oh, what was that? He, he, Kai Green, if you saw it on his Instagram, maybe Tyler can pull these pictures up too. Kai was dressed yeah. as a woman. And I, I went there and I'm like, what the hell is it? Because everyone's sending me these pictures of Kai as a woman. And I'm like... Was that Kai? Was that Kai? I thought it was Iris Kyle. Oh. <laughs> He does look like Iris Kyle um, in those pictures. But Kai um, is obviously using Coming his out. creative, creative uh, streak that he has in him, that creativity, and he is actually uh. doing something on his YouTube channel. Instead of wa wa waiting for TV to come to him, he's like, you know what? I'll just create my own show. I love it. Oh, I could do that. I told you before, when I was five and six, I used to dress up as a woman, Dave. I was ahead of my time. I used to go into the Salvation Army where people make donations and just put on whatever clothes are in there and fucking hell. I used to come out looking like fucking, fucking Melissa Gilbert on Little House on the Prairie with a dress and a fucking bonnet on. I was fucking, I was ahead of my time, Dave, let me tell you. <laughs> Kai looks like that girl, what's her name? Uh, I forget her name. Aunt Jemima. <laughs> Aunt Jemima. <laughs> Aunt Jemima. He looks like uh, Gabrielle Cinebe. <laughs> Serena Williams. Serena Williams. Serena Williams. There you go. He looks like Serena Williams. Oh. Too. Oh, oh, right now, you've said she, he looks like her. He looks like Iris Kai. Looks like Serena Williams. What you're really trying to say is they all look alike. You fucking racist bastard. No, I, I didn't say that. You said that. I didn't say that. I would never say that. I didn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Kai I thought, has I thought, the Linda, Murray, I thought yeah. Linda Murray looked really nice. You know, what? people were sending. Yeah, people were sending me those pictures because you know what? They were trying to like make it look like <laughs> Kai's being acting gay or cross dressing. <laughs> I'm like, you morons! He's he's an actor. He's he's being creative. I mean, 
if you watch this this little, he has one episode. I don't even know if uh, he can. I guess it would be considered the first episode of his, of his variety show, and I don't know if he's uh, going to yeah. do more. I love this one with the bra on. Did you see this one? <laughs> yeah. uh, oh. what, I, what I like is though, it's going to be like, well, didn't you know? You know, Robin Williams was fucking. Was it Robin Williams or Hoffman on Tootsie? It's like you know. You know, to me, that's something I would do, dress up as a lady just to stir people. Look, just have a nail polish on gets people, people there going There you go. Mad, you so. and Kai have nail polish. You, you see? This must be your cross-dressing days. Your next, resorting back next to. week. Oh, okay, I'll break it to you now. I'm going <laughs> to break it to you now. I've been holding back, but Kai and I are engaged. Ah, <laughs> I thought you were going to say that you're going to become a woman. I thought that was what you were going to tell us. No, no, we're, we're engaged. It's that's okay. okay. He, he, he wanted to break the news on his variety show, but, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Halloween, we're going to Halloween, you know, I don't know why he wants me to dress up as a grapefruit, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> Kai should That's actually like, get you on the variety show, Lee. You'd be great on that show. And we could, I could dress up as a woman, too. We could pretend that we're interviewing That's each. right. <laughs> do you, I don't know if you guys remember. I'm sure a lot of our listeners probably do. Some of them are, are too young. There was a show called, a variety show, and I hope maybe Tyler could pull it up, called The Flip Wilson Show. Mm -hmm. And Flip Wilson was a comedian, a black comedian, who would dress up as this female character, Geraldine. And he, he was hysterical as Geraldine. I mean, it was one of the top variety shows back in the 70s. Yeah. And he won all kinds of awards for it. He was really, really good. You, and he actually looks like Kai Green. I, I don't know. <laughs> I wonder if Kai good. got his, his uh, inspiration from being from the Geraldine well, character. That's a, good, that's a good thing it wasn't the a white person dressed up Geraldine. as a black lady or it would yeah, get pulled yeah, from the oh, TV. Nope, the other way, right. Nope, right there. The one with the, the there you go. That's Geraldine and Burt and Burt Reynolds. Uh, well, I'm just, I'm just happy it's a black guy dressing up as a black woman because if it was the, if it was white, the show would be pulled off TV. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> See, that could be you and Lee right there. You you would be like Burt Reynolds, and you know he'd be uh, Geraldine. Yeah. We could like I could dress up as a lady. He could dress up as a lady, and we could discuss women problems. There you go. <laughs> how we're not treated, how we're not treated equally, and stuff like that. <laughs> While we're talking, Tyler, see if you can find one of the one where, where, where Kai is dancing and stuff like that. There was a really good clip in, the, in that show. It might even be on his Instagram where he's dancing. Since, since, since you brought up these um, black issues, Dave, because I know you just brought them up. Yeah. Why? Well, I, um, I just want to know in Chicago a, a day ago, there was 18 people murdered, all black people. One was a four year old child. Why isn't Black Lives Matter marching about that? Who killed them? Black people. Oh. Gang. Gang that's, violence and that. That's why. But, that's why. But this is what I hate, though, because if you have four black lives, yes, they do matter, but it's got to matter when any black life gets murdered by any person. Yeah. Well, you know, here's, here's my take on the whole thing. I, I understand both sides. People are saying it should be everyone's life matters, but, but the Black Lives Matter is not... I don't know who runs the movement or who, who organizes it. I don't know if those people are, are, are good people or not. It's, I think most uh, bl uh, black you know, or African-American people are like the motto because it, it symbolizes something to them, even if the organization itself maybe are, are not mm -hmm. on the up and up. So it, it's the symbolic effect of, of, of the Black Lives Matter that, that more people are rallying behind. And I think a lot of people are getting hung up on the fact that, hey, the organization is corrupt. I don't know if it is or not. Yeah. But it's the, it's, what, it's, it's the metaphor of what it stands for that I think most you know, normal yeah. you know, and I, uh, and I people understand, are I understand behind. that, but if like, you're going to protest about some shit cop killing a black man, yeah. you should protest in your neighborhood about black gang people killing people in your fucking neighborhood. hundred percent. all matter. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. But I understand what, what, what people are trying to say. They're trying to, they're trying to just get well, aware. I think, I think in the beginning, I think in the beginning it had good intentions. Yeah, when so it the awareness of, his, of it is good. But I think the organization, just like all organizations, eventually get corrupt somehow because, well, it, because well, money, I, I money, 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 family donations now in the beginning it started off good but now 80 odd percent of their donations go to administration costs and paying people of and that's course or, or lee priest dressing up as like a woman i mean that that's where most of the costs go to hey, you know that money goes to my pocket <laughs> if you <laughs> oh, it's there, like, there, it's like these actors it's like these actors that look at kai can there. you see that i can't see it okay i'm just looking at my, myself and uh, you how come you can't see that because oh, I'm on a phone, not a computer. Oh, oh. Because Tyler's yeah. too lazy to show you. 
It was Kai dressing yeah. up. He looked like Rick James from uh, Super Freak, you know. <laughs> ah, you have the big bell bottom pants on and doing yes, the yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is so up Kai's alley. And you know what? The reason I bring this up, Lee, and and, and you comment. Everyone in our industry complains that, hey, you know, there's no way to make money. You know, all these supplement mm -hmm. companies not hiring anymore. Kai Green is a perfect example of a guy who says, you know what? I don't need bodybuilding anymore exactly. to make money. I don't need to compete at the Olympia to win 400 grand. I got my own creativity. I'll do my own thing, the stuff that I like to do, and I'll, and I'll monetize it somehow. And it's a great idea. He's very entertaining. You know, we all mm -hmm. like to watch his antics, right? He's a, he really is an actor. Most of what he, he puts okay. out there is complete drama all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Might as well monetize it on YouTube, right? I'll watch it. I know you'll watch it. Most of the industry exactly. will watch Every, it. Everyone, everyone that's complaining about it and probably will say, we're going to get all these things now. He's coming out of the closet. He's gay. Right, he's, right. He's, he's they don't understand. Everyone, that, gets, everyone that complains about it will fucking watch it. And it's yeah. like, he's, like I said, he's thinking outside the box. And in bodybuilding... Unless you're one of the top guys, you're not yeah. really making money because supplement contracts now are going down and this yep. and that. So, well, I haven't competed in the IFBB since, what, 2006. And guess what? Yeah. Lee's still fucking here. He's still hanging around. Lee's driving a Maserati. So you must be doing pretty good. Uh, I'll, also, too, I did post, but I just want to say, Mr. G. Ah, you got the jumbo there's plumbo. A, there's, a, there's a few missing, but... <laughs> I've, got a couple, I've got a couple left. And you know me, Dave. I've lived in America. I've lived all around the world. I've traveled to Europe and stuff. And I've eaten a lot of shit food in my life when it comes to cookies and biscuits and stuff. But yeah. I can honestly say these are the nicest cookies I've ever had. Wow. Mr. G will be very happy to hear that. Thank you. Nicest, nicest ever, whether it's the ingredients. But it's like, you know, if you eat a normal chocolate chip cookie somewhere, it just tastes like chocolate chip. But it seems like... In here, you can taste nearly every ingredient that he puts in it, whether it's the honey, wheat, whatever. But, you know, you can taste everything. It's like a explosion on my palate, Dave. Wow. Well, they you know, it is all, they're as, all, all natural a, ingredients in there. That's, that's, the, that's why the I think is, it tastes so good. And, and, and seriously, I'm not lying. You can actually pretty much taste every single ingredient yeah. because it's not like you said, preservatives and shit like that. No. So. If Steve Blackman's watching, don't talk about explosions in the mouth. But these are the best, <laughs> best cookies I've ever had. So I highly wow, recommend. Wow, Lee, raving endorsement. It is, and trust me, you've seen me bulked up at two eighty-five. I've eaten a lot of fucking <laughs> cookies. Those are fifteen hundred calorie cookies, too. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the one I had yesterday was fifteen hundred and twenty-four. <laughs> And 50 grams of protein or so. There you go. So it was you like might get meal. huge again. You a might meal. be back to and Olympia form soon. I will if I keep eating them, so, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a very good, but nice endorsement. Are. I don't and, make any I money gave, off those. I gave, my wife, I gave my wife a little bit like this. Oh, one. that's very kind of you. She very tried nice. to steal that half white chocolate one, you yeah. know, to, she liked that one. And You'll get a kick out of this, Lee. My son, was, my four-and-a-half-year-old son yesterday, I bought a McDonald's. And oh, yeah. it came with a uh, with a large vanilla shake that he was supposed to share with mm -hmm. his sister, but he didn't. And he ate the whole McDonald's meal, and then he drank the entire shake. Now, normally my son <laughs> only drinks like a couple sips, and he'll save it. He'll use it over like three or four days. We'll put it in the freezer. Uh, what do you think happened after he drank the whole thing? Cracked out. Sp either spewed or he shit everywhere. Yeah, he spewed it everywhere. Like about an hour later, he's been complaining about his stomach bothering him for like an hour. I'm like, you should have had the whole shake. Because we all fell for that when we were kids. You eat the McDonald's really? meal, you drink the shake, and you're like, oh. Well, all, four the enough, whole four thing, enough. all over the floor, the whole thing. At least it wasn't in the car. Yeah, like, no, exactly. The car gets in the seat, that rotten smell of bile and milk in yeah, the seat. Yeah, well, I said to him, uh, I said, can you go in? The, he's like, I don't feel good. I said, go in the t go throw up in the toilet bowl. He goes, no, no, yeah. I'll do it on the wood floor. <laughs> I said, I think, blah. Can you imagine, like I said, if it gets in the crack of your seats, down in the seat belts and shit. Yeah. It's oh, like when no. you bang a girl in the back seat of the car and the cum leaks out with the pussy juice. You can never get that out. It's like no, you no, no. In the back you, of the car. You, it ruins the car. He ruined the car but seat. He's four, four and a half, Dave. Don't you think that's a bit young to get him on gear and a bulking side? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck's going on? I knew it. Shake. 
You want to get big, you got to fucking drink that shake. When I saw that shake on the whole thing, because it, it had to be this tall. It was like a, a big, large one. I was like, oh, and, no. I said, he's and, in- and the thing was, you knew he was going to be sick. You just wanted to see if he could hold it down, didn't you? <laughs> I, my wife was, was like, Amanda was like, I can't believe that he, he, he's not throwing up yet. I said, and it, he lasted about a good hour. He was laying on the floor like, you know how uh, like when you're so full you can't move? He was like, uh-huh. he was laying on the floor with his arms out to the side. And I thought, all right, I think he made it past it. We go upstairs and then he's like, he got that look on his face. Like he's like, I, I said, are you going to throw up? He goes, yeah. I said, go in the bathroom. He's like, no, no, no. I got to get to the wood floor. <laughs> he needed, he needed a big surface good. area. Listen. At least the wood floor was considered. It's like it's like that night after when you just compete and you eat so much food after the yeah. contest and you just lay there like that. He felt so good after like, he threw it up. He was like, I feel good now. I'm okay. You know? Amanda's getting mad at you. Dave, why'd you let him drink it? Why'd you let him drink it? You're like, Amanda, this is his initiation into Palumboism. Step back. That's right. There Step you go. back. My boy's getting Palumboism. There Look at go. the belly. Look at yeah, his belly yeah. bulging. That's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> my my daughter my daughter my two and a half year old daughter ate a half of one of those jumbo palumbo cookies i think she i don't know oh how she God. and she didn't throw anything up she kept it down i don't know how she did that but well hopefully hopefully now next time he'll know not to drink the whole shake no. or dave as a responsible father get him a fucking small one that's what right doing? that's right i want yeah. my son to have the best the biggest <laughs> mcdonald's is great though yeah. isn't it? isn't a great food at mcdonald's oh my god yeah one of the someone was fail. telling me they had five on. guys. Uh, one of the one of my clients has his cheat meal. I always tell him do McDonald's. He had five guys. What? He said he was fucking sick as a dog. McDonald's, no problem. Oh. Well, no onions. Five. Just tell McDonald. I always tell McDonald's no onions. If you get rid of, you don't put the onions on, you're fine. Five guys. Fucking Blackman's had eight. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Five? That's uh, just a, five's just a fucking warm up. That's like fluffing. Lee, Lee you got to be. We got to get you on the Kai Green Variety Show. I wouldn't mind getting a, as a little cameo on the Kai Green uh, Variety Show too, because um, <laughs> Kai. But you got to you got to be willing to do anything, Dave. I see. I got no limits. I'll do uh, <laughs> Kai, look, I watched Kai pose over the years, and I said to myself, you know what? This guy should be on Broadway. Because he's got the, the he's got the talent and the creativity of that. He just is so typecast. Mm-hmm. YouTube is perfect for him because he can make it be his own person on there. John Romano said years ago, he goes, you know how you save women's bodybuilding? Stop trying to let them compete on a bodybuilding stage. Turn it into a Broadway show. Mm-hmm. Who wouldn't want to see these 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 muscle girls doing like you know they they love to perform you know and that's that's Kai. He should get a whole troop of women bodybuilders. I know Pauline Nelson is with him. And she's oh. doing a lot of that. He should get more female bodybuilders added to the variety show because it, it it adds for the sensationalism of what he's trying to do, don't you think? We could we could have like we could have Sigourney Weaver narrate it. And then <laughs> we have gorillas in the mist. Ah, that's and have, nice. have the smoke machine come on, <laughs> and then the bodybuilding women come out. <laughs> And I meant all the women, people. There are white body people. No, but think about it. Aside play, from don't the fi- try to play the race card with me That's saying right. gorillas in the mist, okay? Who spends more time and effort on their posing routine, and it doesn't even get scored on stage? Oh, it- Kai does. And the thing is, too, I saw a preview for, um, I think that Hamilton, you know, that stage play Hamilton's coming here and stuff. And oh, it well, it's going to be on TV. I think they record it, so it's going to Netflix. Yeah. But... You know, when you see, like you said, stage plays where people are so dramatic and talking. Because on stage, when they do Broadway, they're very overdramatic. Yes, they've put yes. it across. It's like when you do a photo shoot, you've got to really get in an awkward position for the photo to look great. You know, you've got to yeah. be that real, okay, this isn't natural, but it looks good. So you can see Kai Duck, he's so with his hands and the way yeah. he talks and stuff like that. So you could definitely see him on Broadway in you know, something like that where he's very expressive Absolutely. in what he does. He did that one man show he wrote himself, I, I know, and it was it was pretty no, well received. Let's not, let's not bring that up, Dave. We're trying to forget about those videos. Okay. <laughs> no, not that one man show. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, he did like a monologue one one man show, and, and it was well received. I think this is this is great. Um, you could tell, you know, look when you have to put on costumes and makeup sets. I mean, that stuff doesn't take. That's not like a like a, a half hour show you're filming. That's like a whole day or maybe more than one day of filming. So he's obviously mm-hmm. putting a lot of effort into this. Will it have a, a, a monetary reward for it? I think it will. I think he'll get sponsors for that show. 
Um, I think it will. I said, you know, it might start off at the moment. Everyone's going to go, well, look at some of these shows that have started off like actual big shows, even, you know, some of those Tonight shows when they first started, yeah. people were like, oh, this is a bit corny, got yeah. a few guests on, blah, blah, blah. But all of a sudden, they take off and Jay Leno and Dave Letterman and even, what's his name, Johnny Carson before yeah. that. In the beginning, they were very corny. You're like, oh, this is a fucking corny yeah. show. I remember when fucking Ellen first come on, everyone's like, oh, Ellen's show, this is pretty drab now yeah. what 16 seasons later making millions of dollars but years ago the variety show was a big thing jerry lewis had you know one and and people like that corny like you know remember the carol burnett show that was a great show as well i mean kai has that kind of personality that can pull it off and he seems to have some supporting a supporting cast there i can, people. I can do i can do variety shows look <laughs> I am corny old, corny old, corny old. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I need yeah, TV yeah. for my bunghole, bunghole. See, that? see how, see how quick I can go into character. There you go. I like it. I can go from a look. I can go from a normal Einstein look into fucking retard. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should have the Lee Priest variety show, and your we could we could create your own oh. show. Yeah, and then we can combine them together. There you go. You maybe the maybe yeah, welcome, you could have like a reunion like Welcome, that welcome to the Kai Green and Lee Priest show, Ebony <laughs> and Ivory. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Where black welcome. and white lives matter. There you go. Exactly. Welcome to the funny. Oreo Hour. How are you going? <laughs> the Oreo Hour. Yeah, there you go. Oh, Cabri, no, Cabri top deck. Cabri top deck. That's like white and dark chocolate. <laughs> And it just melts well, in your mouth. If you had to make a, if you, yeah, if you had to make a suggestion for Lee Priest for like a, you know, a skit that he should do, Lee Priest for, I mean, High Green for a skit for him to do, what would it be? Do you have any ideas you might want to pass over to him? Oh, Kai. Well, it's hard to say the way how Kai's mind works. So I don't think anything would be off limits because he's so adventurous and he's like me. It's like if someone said, I'd come on here and do shit, people call me racist. They'd say I'm sexist. I didn't yeah. because. You know, that's why there's some of the best comedians in the world and the funniest things are real life stuff that, you know, people take the wrong way, yeah. but it's just comedy. People need to learn to laugh at themselves. It's like, right. that's the main thing. It's like, in the old days, you got to laugh at yourself. Remember, you got to have all these TV shows on and people would laugh at it. You, you had Archie Bunker, that was pretty racist. Of you course. had the Jeffersons. The Jeffersons were just as racist and stuff, but it was like real life stuff, real life issues and problems, but they made fun of it and we all had a laugh at it. But now... You can't laugh at fuck at anything anymore, so it's like, Jesus. I would like to see Kai as Bill Cosby with, like, doing Jello pudding, you know, or something like that, where he's putting, I like, like, I like... I like to see Kai as Bill Cosby dropping roofies in the... That's drink. what I'm saying. And Instead I, of, like, the pudding, you're putting, like, he's putting roofies in the, in the pudding, you know? And I could play the blonde lady that eats the Jello and lays there like this. <laughs> and or, then wake up and go, ooh, my glutes are sore. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> or you have the girl... Kick his ass, you know, just to, you know, as like a See, funny, that, like. that would be funny, but then you have all the women's groups coming out. Oh, you're making fun of rape, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, you're making fun of rape. <laughs> hey, lady, come on now. Have you seen yourself lately? You should be lucky you got rape because, <laughs> fucking hell, you ain't, get, you ain't getting any sex naturally, that's for sure. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> now, I don't condone rape, people. I'm not saying I condone no. it, but. He's only. It just depends. Just doing a variety, <laughs> practicing his variety show. That's all he's doing. Exactly. It's like, I remember even that Jim Jeffries, the comedian Australian one, when he talks about stuff, he's so funny because he's like, the way women, you know, if you take a girl home and you'll be like, you know, you, when you first take a girl home, you're like, you go to touch it. She's like, oh, stop it, stop it. And you're putting your hand down her pants and she's like, oh, no, don't, don't. <laughs> okay. And you go to put your finger in. Oh, stop it, stop it. Jim's like, now. If she, if she says you rape that, she goes, trust me, when that's read back in court, it doesn't quite sound the same. She said, stop it, stop it, no, don't, stop it, stop it. It doesn't right, quite exactly. sound the same when it's read back in court. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, stop it. Well, nowadays, everything's videotaped pretty much. In, in, in another five years, there'll be nothing you can do that won't be on videotape somewhere. So I guess... Well, I told you, that's where the cock cam's coming back in action, so it's all recorded. So. Yeah. Yeah, the, well, our whole lives will be recorded pretty soon. They'll have like little things through your eyes. There'll be cameras in our eyes, and everything that, that gets done in your whole entire life will be recorded. Like the Minority Report, they'll know ahead of time That's what right. you're going to there do you before you know it. That's Remember, right. that was all about that go stop a murder before it happened. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So. But you know what? We, we will get to that point where everything will be recorded. Um, and I guarantee um, it'll be eye cameras that we'll have. So your whole I'm, life, I'm, you'll be able to review your whole life through your, <laughs> you know, the eye camera. I'm just, I can review my life now. I just go on fucking YouTube. 
I just yeah. fucking look at it. I need an eye camera. I can't remember anything I did. I, I need. I know guys that like know every detail of everything that happened in their life. They tell me stuff about <laughs> my life that I can't even remember. So I need an eye camera to, 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 to go back and... Uh... Oh, some go back to the day where they go, and then, Dave, I saw this little crack in the opening, and then my head popped out. <laughs> and, there I, and there I was, coming out of my mother's vagina. It was like I was coming through a merkin. It was just this big bush, and out I came. I was like... <laughs> You can't, you can't remember because you got Alzheimer's, you dark bastard. You're getting old. That's what it is. Must be, yeah. Do, don't you think they're Alzheimer's? I was thinking about this. Well, I can still remember it because I haven't got it. But if you went to the doctor, right, and he told you had Alzheimer's, would you really fucking care? Seriously, because yeah, what could you by, do, the time, yeah. well, by the time you got home, you wouldn't remember what he fucking told there you. There you go. There you go. It's not like if your doctor says, Dave, you've got cancer. Now, you remember that, and you fucking go, oh, I've got cancer. I'm yeah, going to yeah. die. You worry about it. You've got Alzheimer's, driving home, you get home, your wife says, how'd the doctors go? You go, great, what did he say? Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't fucking know. I don't have Alzheimer's, I still say that. I'm what like, doctor? I don't remember what, what he doctor? said. <laughs> your, doctor's, your doctor's appointment, the doctor's point in your head, what did he say? I didn't go to no doctor, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, it'd be the greatest thing to have, you wouldn't remember shit. Right. You'd be like, fucking hell. Right, right, right. Maybe I should call the doctor again to go see. They get to the phone, who am I calling again? He called up, yeah, I need to see the doctor. <laughs> Hello, who's this? This is the doctor's. Oh, why'd you call me? Yeah, you called me. Who, what? Oh, fucking, I don't know. That'd be the best thing to have. You wouldn't remember shit until the point, you know, I think yeah. after a while when it gets really bad, yeah. you forget how to eat and chew and shit and sleep. And yeah, that's not fun. But then you don't even realize it anyway. Exactly. You still wouldn't know, would you? No. Someone's like, oh, no, he doesn't remember. He just shit his pants. But would you know you shit your pants? You'd smell something if you can remember how to smell. But then if you smelt shit, you wouldn't remember what shit smelt That's like. Right, so yeah. you'd be like, you'd be like, oh, what's that? That's a funny smell. John Romano said it. Old, Alzheimer's is the greatest blessing to, to, to an old person. They don't remember anything. It's every day is a new day for them. So. Especially if you don't want to remember the wife. You're like, oh, Jesus, who the fuck's that? I'm your wife. Oh, you're my wife. Oh, fucking hell. Then 10 minutes later, oh, who are you? <laughs> Be like that movie of Drew Barrymore, 51st States, remember? That's Every right. Day you couldn't remember anything. Do, yeah, yeah. Is, is a bit of trivia. Do you know I was meant to be on that movie? You were. I didn't know that. Oh, that was filmed in Venice, wasn't it? And no, I don't know where it was, but the director called me up. I had the script. I had everything. I, had, I was meant to do a video and send it in. For six months, he was on my ass. They had me... A coach that learned me to speak English, but that guy, um, Austin, someone, you know, the guy from Lord of the Rings, he played the brother. Oh, you know, Sean Austin? Mus- yeah, he was meant to be muscular. He kept going on steroids and blah, blah, blah. That was meant to be my part, but. Really? How'd you blow that? Yeah. My manager didn't send in the video. Oh, really? That's For a- six months, they'll call me up, Leo, we need you to do this. I got your coach to speak English. I said, wouldn't it be better if I had an Australian accent? It'd be funnier. You know, yeah. So- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine that if I had gone on an Adam Sandler movie, if he likes you, he uses the same characters over and right, over. Right, but why didn't, why, hold on, but what, how did they even contact you? Did you meet someone in the gym or something? I don't know. As was around the same time as the Hulk, so I don't know how, how it happened. Yeah, but someone just called me up and goes, you need to call these people. They're looking for you, blah, blah, blah. And when I went to see the movie, it was so funny because I'd read the script and I knew my lines off by heart. I'm sitting uh, in the movie theater going, blah, 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 blah. That I think that could have been me. That sucks. Now, was that true that you you were supposed to that they, when they made the Incredible Hulk with the one with uh, uh, Eric Banner that you were actually one of the prototypes for the what the Hulk was going to look like? I did all that. Yeah, I went up to um, George Lucas's studio. They actually flew me up to Industrial Light and Magic in San Francisco. Right. And all the all the, when I when I went for the role because everybody was I think Gunter and everyone. As I was leaving, they go, Lee, you need to come back in here. The stunt coordinator wants to see you. And Ang Lee was in there. And Ang Lee had one of those suits on, you know, with the electrodes on it, right. motion capture. But it looked too animated still. So because I was in contest shape, they're like, you're perfect. You know, squeeze the muscles. You can see the muscles and the fibers and the veins. Right. So I went, I went up to George Lucas's studio. It was like a big kid's toy room, shit everywhere. Oh, you must Darth have loved Vader, it. Millennium Falcon in a big Oh, you must have case. loved so it, yeah. They took me out to this studio and there's like 15 cameras all around me. I had to do the running, jumping. When he's swinging that tank around, I was swinging around a sandbag on a piece of so rope. that was you? That was your body that they used? Yeah. And then wow. they downloaded that into the computer. And that, that. And then two years later, I did the same thing when Hulk 2 came out with um, Edward Norton. I did the same thing for the video game, all the running. It's like, this gay guy, so because I'm quiet, I don't like to yell. Yeah. And this gay guy's like, come on, Ali, come on. <laughs> Think the Hulk. 
be the Hulk, Lee, be the Hulk. And then I start fucking laughing. I'm like, yes, I was like, you know, when he's fighting those big Hulk dogs in the first movie, I was yeah. just slamming bags together and banging on them like this. And, <laughs> That's great. And with Joel Schumacher died, I think I mentioned this before, Joel Schumacher died the other day. I met him because... Oh, I he did? I, I did a movie Batman with him. Yeah, I didn't know he died. You know when that movie Batman come out, that yeah. one he did with Mr. Freeze and that, I went for the part as Bane. And, and it came down to Christian Boving. He had quite a few scenes in it as some of the henchmen and that. Remember right. Christian Boving? Yep. He knew. So he got me to go up and do the audition. It came down between me and Jeep Swenson for the part. Uh... But they... They went with Jeep because he was tall and he had to act beside Uma Thurman a lot through the movie. Yeah. So Joel Schumacher's like, oh, I feel so, sorry for Lee. He'd kill himself if he knew how close he was to it. He goes, tell him to come up and I'll take him down. So I went up to see Joel Schumacher and he took me down and they will filming Lois and Clark So because I love Superman. So yeah. he took me down to see that. And when he led me around this back room, there's like 15 Superman suits hanging up. And I'm like, uh... would, I, would I miss one? Would I fucking miss one if I fucking take one? <laughs> <laughs> That would have been fun. Yeah, you should. They would have had to put you on a big on a ladder almost to to, to look. Well, big yeah, enough. Well, Jeep, even even Jeep as tall as he had, he had those big boots on. I know. And then they painted they painted all the veins on him and stuff. I, in know, the vein, I know. But yeah, I come close to getting that part too. So story of my life. Yeah, you were almost there. Almost. But there. I'm going to be on the Kai. I'm but gonna now go you're on the Kai, on the Kai Green, Green Variety Show. Me. We're going to get you on there. So that now you made it. That's, that's what you've been waiting for. You've been building your whole Hollywood career up for the Kai Green Variety Show. Hey, I just want to give a big shout out. Kai Green, I hope you stick with it. Don't give up, man. It looks great. Uh, I really love it. I want to I wanna do a scene from Petticoat Junction. <laughs> What's the scene going to be? I don't know. Petticoat Junction. It was an old show. I don't know. Fucking, it's oh. like the Big Valley. Remember that show? The Big I, Valley? Thought you had a, I thought you had a, an idea for a scene. Oh, we just wing it. Kai and I just wing it. We just go with the flow. Ebony and ivory together in perfect harmony. Let me see you sing a few notes. Let's see if audition for Kai right now. <coughs> side by side on my piano keyboard. <laughs> oh Lord, why don't we? Kai, give him a call. Lee Priest. I'm Dave Palumbo for another edition of After Hours. Best cookies I am rage. I confuse the TV shows. I can't believe it. I'm losing my mind. And I'm John Romano. Thanks for joining us on. <laughs> I'm Greg well, Martino. John Romano on. here, man. <laughs> Come on. You got to get your shows right. Come on, Lee. 